Is popularity overrated? Surely sometimes we'd rather be the cool kid sat in the corner than the one hogging the limelight. Well, in that case, Mini has a bit of a problem with its new convertible. That's because the old version wasn't just a hit, it was the most popular soft top in the UK full stop. Time to drive the new one and find out if we should still be buying one of these instead of that tempting Fiat 500C or DS3 Cabriolet you've had your eye on. By now we should all be used to how the modern minis look. The new convertible is even bigger than before, but it's still got all the familiar styling cues, like the oval shapes in the headlights, grille and door handles. There's also lots of chrome everywhere to highlight each detail. There's a whole world of colours, trims and stickers that you can choose from to make your car stand out more than this subtle grey. In fact, you can even get a Union Jack woven into the cloth roof, but it'll still sit crumpled in a pile at the back and not folded away neatly in the boot. Despite this awkward design, Mini have listened to its customers and tried to make the convertible a little bit easier to use for everyday life. So, if you open up the boot, they've fitted these little handles that help you pop it out and open. So your boot becomes wider than a letterbox and you can actually fit your stuff in. You'll also be able to fit more people in here than ever before, with enough space in the back for real people with actual knees to fit in the back row. The layout is also user-friendly, with the rev counter and speedo now directly in front of you. Run your fingers over the switch gear and it feels sturdier than what you'd find in a Fiat 500C or the DS3 Cabrio. The driving position is nice and low to the floor, but with the excellent view down the bonnet, it just highlights how poor the visibility is when reversing, with the folded roof blocking your view. This Cooper S model comes with a standard 8.8 inch extra large screen for the media system, which is bright, clear and easy to use, and has the same excellent software and layout as the latest BMWs. Mini has struck a good balance between driving fun and passenger comfort in the convertible. Quick steering and grippy front tyres mean that the Mini feels darting and agile while on twisty roads, with little body lean. It feels fun, but it's not quite as relaxing as its less sporty rivals. Despite losing the roof, it's also pretty stiff, with much less flex in the body than you'd expect. You can still feel the car shimmy around slightly over really bumpy roads, and while it soaks up the big bumps, well, it gets unsettled on rough surfaces, even with the optional adaptive dampers at their softest. There are two petrol engines to choose from, but this 2-litre turbo is much quicker than the chirpy 3-cylinder 1.5-litre in the Cooper. Both provide excellent in-gear punch and pull strongly from low revs, so it's only on the motorway that you'll miss the extra power of the S. The standard six-speed manual is a bit tight and notchy, so you have to be accurate and positive if you want smooth changes. But the automatic version is pricey and pushes up the CO2 emissions. While if you stick with the manual, even the Cooper S will do almost 50 miles per gallon and emit just 139 grams per kilometre. If you're after a good-looking convertible that's also cheap to run, fun to drive and nicely built, this Mini will deliver on all those counts. It feels like a higher quality item than the car it replaces and is much better to drive too with decent ride comfort and perky engines, but it's also expensive. And for those less concerned about how a car drives, cheap arrivals on Fiat and DS are better value. If you enjoyed watching this video, click on the button below to subscribe to our YouTube channel, or leave us a comment and let us know what you think of the Mini Convertible. If you want to see more videos like this one, click on the window in the top right. If you'd like our Audi A3 Convertible review, then click on the window on the bottom right.